StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hey, Chris, can you hear the sound of approaching Easter bunnies? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Guys, hello and welcome to this month in GSA Startups, March 2023 edition. Welcome to our March news wrap up with the most important news from the startup scenes in Germany, Austria and Switzerland, sometimes even little uh, Liechtenstein. We do this in 30 minutes or less. And therefore, I would like to welcome my co-host and co-founder, Chris from New York. How are you doing, man? <laughs> Hi, what a calm start to the show. I enjoy it. Yes, we try to be very smooth today. We follow with our news, the top-down structure, top news followed by a bird's eye view at the startup ecosystem. Next, deeper looking at interesting startup cities, and we end with the general news. For those of you who are really serious about startups, there is even a collection called Stay Ahead of the Curve, where we share interesting reads, articles, studies, and podcasts. Um. Chris is in New York. I'm at Frankfurt. As we've said, we recorded this news on the 27th of March. A little disclaimer here. You may have noticed that we had a lot of stress here at StartupRate.io in February. I discovered a bucket of news in our backlog that was not taken care of for the last news. So I just added it in this time. All news not yet included here will be published on our next news episode for April to be published on April 27th, maybe 28th, depending on the travel schedule of Chris. Find all the links to the quoted news in our Medium blog link below. If you celebrate it, happy Easter. We also trying to bring you a bit of culture from Germany here. Chris, how do you celebrate Easter? <laughs> well, I mean, since I'm a godless and faithless <laughs> person <laughs> not much will be happening for easter but my parents on the 13th uh, in the week after easter will celebrate their golden wedding anniversary for 50 years of marriage and we will actually spend some time together in hamburg so very very nice that's the thing i believe in the marriage of my parents there you go <laughs> That is nice. Also, what is pretty common is what I do. For example, I have two little boys. Um, I go in the front, in the front garden and, um, the Easter bunny goes with me and, uh, places their, uh, little treats and little presents all around the place and they can run and fetch everything they can. Um, also what is traditional is a carrot cake, at least for me and my family. And around Easter, you usually eat lamb. True. Yeah. Any, anything else you could add? No, just hiding the eggs. And like as a kid, it was always very exciting for me to look for the eggs and the sweets. Usually in the yeah. laundry machine. The laundry machine was always a hiding place. <laughs> <laughs> I think I already like your parents. Um, a little note on the day of recording, Germany's long distance train was shut down and a lot of airports only the departures. I heard you could still arrive, for example, in Frankfurt, but for many, many uh, airports here in Germany, it was basically locked down due to a strike. Um, you are more the person who really gets this neatly wrapped up in your nightly newsletter. I once heard for more than 50,000 subscribers. Um, can you explain a little bit what is going on since we try to do a little bit more than just the startup news here? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's very interesting since we're right now in the middle of this conversation. So probably when you are hearing this, uh, things have developed a bit differently. But um, yeah, it is one of the biggest strikes in Germany of the past decades. Um, the, there were basically no trains running. Um, mostly like the big airports were shut down. But um, also from what I read so far today as like a first little wrap up of it all was that it actually went quite smoothly and people are still a bit on the side of the of the workers, I would say. And it also went quite smoothly because people in office jobs, at least, ha have a much easier time to, to stay at home than they probably used to do um, three or four years ago before the pandemic. But now since people are used to the home office and also mm -hmm. since that strike was announced already uh, late last week, I think 
Um, it was a bit like hitting the pause button for a day, and now they announced they won't do anything over Easter. And yeah, so far, I guess if you if you go on strike, and Germany is a country with traditionally strong unions, you need the people on your side. And so far, it looks to me as if they do, even though the uh, raise and salary that the people want is actually quite high, and it's north of 10%. Very good. So, um, do you want to just go ahead with the highlights? Yeah. Oh, well, um, before we get into that, we should tell everybody who's just listening to this, the visual news, you now wear glasses and are bearded down for spring and summer. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, we have uh, one beard less, one pair of glasses more. It's not just decoration. decoration. Um, yeah. I wasn't planning on doing this, but it was also such an interesting cultural difference because if you need to get glasses in Germany, it basically takes like three or four different appointments of people and you go to different stores and you go to the eye doctor and yada, yada, yada. And here it was basically just, oh, things look a bit blurry. I think I should get an eye exam. And 20 minutes later, I have the glasses for the first time in my life. Anyway, let's dive in. <laughs> in the um let's go to business i would say and uh, because we have a long list of things and uh first of our highlights to give you a little overview of what we will be talking about in the next 15 to 20 minutes we have good news and bad news for fintechs raisin and n26 raisin gets its unicorn status back and it gets a lot of new business so much so that in fact the complaints at barfin are mountain so barfin is like the regulatory um, oversight in Germany. N26 generated 200 million euros in revenue in 21, but has to deal with a senior employee uprising right now. We'll be talking about that. New Bank Ruki was saved last minute. Startup Bonify makes a reportedly 20 million euro exit, but the employees only get invited to a barbecue. Go student is a no go with courts and the first Goldman backed think Goldman backed fintech in germany struggles and we will have a look at bavarian airlines which may be just a hoax uh and last but not least grover shows first signs on their way to an ipo so let's talk startups before we do so the video podcast will go live on thursday march 30th which you know same goes for the audio podcast um And uh, the publication on Ximalaya always takes place on the following Friday. This time, this will be March 31st. You can always tune into our radio station at www.startup.radio. You can subscribe to newsletters, etc., which you can find on our link tree, linktr.ee slash startup radio. And we also have enablers and supporters, which uh, you will guide us through, and then we can get going. Of course, this recording is supported by HTAI, Hessen Trade and Invest, and the Enterprise Europe Network, Hessen, as well as StartupRaven.com. And you can find us on the app Newsly. Um, they gather the most trending web articles, and you can also get podcasts there. Not surprisingly, StartupRaven.io, plus a lot of our sub-podcasts there. I'm handing back to Mr. Top News, Chris here. <laughs> yes. So uh, I was already hinting at it. We have some good news and bad news at Raisin. So uh, the raising interest rates are, a good, are good for the deposit broker, Raisin. They're driving an increase in business and help them to get a unicorn valuation with their most recent fundraising. And it seems they even got a bit overwhelmed by the amount of new businesses that they attracted. Um, so if we have a closer look at the news, we reported about the then ongoing fundraising of Raisin um, and that they are about to get their unicorn horn back. And this is now confirmed. Um, Raisin raised more raised 60 million euros in VC funding and reclaimed its formerly unicorn status rights finance business de the bad news though is that uh, it seems as if also complaints are piling up so that bafin as i said the regulatory uh, commission in germany um takes notice is a story that german um trade and business newspaper handelsblatt wrote about 
We stay in the fintech sector where N26, a company that a new bank that we've been talking about too very often here, has also good and bad news as well. In February 22, six of their high ranking managers wrote an email warning the founders that the company uh, might be turning dysfunctional. Um, this became news only about a year later. So now this year when the chief risk officer stepped down, most of the managers backing the email have left already. And uh, so, yeah, we have some background information about this. Um, and then Thomas Grohe, which uh, who was our guest from the past, became chief risk officer and reportedly sent the email to the N26 founders. He stepped down this month, uh, month and um, also for uh, personal reasons, writes a uh, Börsenzeitung, um, Grosse actually, sorry, not Gro, I said Gro. Um, and yeah, and uh, to to Thomas, um, at the time we were uh, interviewing him, he was with Google and was the person in charge of Google Pay here in Germany. There you go. Um, yeah, so, and he also noted that his position was a requirement by BaFin in order to get N26 out of regulatory troubles. So, um, yeah, the company really, really is working on leaving those legal troubles behind, but it seems to be a pretty long path. Uh, nevertheless, there's also good news for them because they increased their revenue due to the rising interest rates and they are looking at 20 million euro revenue for 22, which would be an increase by two thirds, 67 percent. Another new bank is Ruki, R-U-U-K-Y, which is saved last minute. First, we told you bad news for Hamburg-based new bank Ruki, uh, which had to file for insolvency uh, and that the service will be terminated. But we also, uh, now it appears as if they found a buyer. Details about this has finance business. And um, it was about two weeks ago that this was announced. And um, it seems as if the lights won't go out, de won't definitely go out. So uh, we will see. Maybe they live on for another day. Um, and then there's the questions of whether you should get millions or an invite to a nice barbecue if your founders <laughs> can get an exit for what you build. The German startup Bonify was bought by the Germ by the largest credit bureau in Germany, Schufa, for 20 million euros. And the employees only got a uh, barbecue. The problem was the company did a down round and with the liquidation preferences, meaning who gets paid first, there was nothing left for the employees with stock option plans. So, well, that was better, some like good German sausage going on there. Go Student, on the other hand, gets legal headwinds. They got another court ruling against them. First, a Cologne court agreed. Go Student showed anti-competitive behavior. Now they got a setback with an Austrian ruling against them for automated contracts, contract extensions of the clients. And um, yeah, so they, there was already also a partial partial sentencing, all of which you can read more about in the show notes. And um, Goldman Sachs backed up startup has to fight. We had them as a guest back in 2017, and they made headlines as Germany's first startup investment by Goldman. Now they have to fight. It's called Elinvar, A-E-L-I-N-V-A-R. It's a fintech that lost a third uh, reference uh, customer, M.M. Warburg. They ended the corporation with Elinvar after five years. They also lost since September Fürstlich Kastelsche Bank and DKB. So also um, rather bad news on that front for this fintech startup. And we have news about Bavarian Airlines. Um, it was supposed to be a new airline, new and upcoming airline. And now questions arise. For example, the founder claimed to be 18, but he's only 15 years old, which I don't know. In my book, it doesn't like neither sounds very <laughs> trustworthy for a CEO of an airline. Um, none of the required paperwork to establish German companies has been filed. The not so long past of the founder is littered with website or financial service companies that are offline now. And it seems nothing of that story was true. Also, a complaint with legal authorities has been filed. So we will see. Um, Better news, uh, on the other hand, are there for a German unicorn called Grover. It's a gadget renting company. Um, 
which was able to lure an experienced CFO away from Lilium and um, which is therefore regarded as a first step towards an IPO a few years down the road, maybe. You can read more about that also in the show notes. And there is a story about that in Handelsblatt as well. This is it for the top news. Uh, we will talk some housekeeping and brag a bit, which is your expertise. I actually skipped the bragging, even though I was quoted in Forbes last month. Um, but that is a completely different topic. We have for you, you startup summit 20% off. It's taking place in Barcelona, April 20 and 21st. If you're there, just let me know. The code is startup radio 20. Tech Open Air also takes place on July 7th to uh, 5th to 7th in Berlin. Good news about our former guests. First, crypto custody Crypto custodian Finoa gets license approval from German regulator BaFin. You can learn more in our in-depth interview with one of the co-founders and also in different news about them. 2021 was a good year for them as well. They increased their revenue from 550,000 euros in 2020 to 13 million in 21. That's what I would call growth. Berlin-based Monite raises 5 million in seed for embedded B2B payment platforms. Of course, you can learn more in our interview with the founder. Going a little bit more into the ecosystem view, our friends from Equidem, of course, interview down here in the show notes, um, have an update on startup valuations in Europe for February. The startup, the state of startup valuations, uh, have a link, have a look down in the show notes. First, there have been lowered valuations, but the outlook is better. Talk about ups here. Germany has a federal tradition. That means it is much less centralized than other countries. For example, Germany's highest court is in Karlsruhe, the federal employment agency is in Nuremberg, and so on. Therefore, not all startup activities happen in Berlin only depending on what you're looking at, around 20%. Munich only has around 8%. So there's a lot of startup activity, more than two thirds going on outside here. Let's talk about my home turf, Frankfurt. Frankfurt-based CAPTIQ, C-A-P-T-I-Q, raised undisclosed amount in a VC round. And Compredict, one of our guests, virtual sensors are changing the future of connected mobility, writes Tech EU. You can learn more about the company and our interview with them, published in September 2022, talking about being ahead of the curve. Hamburg-based Imploded Impossible Clouds, sorry, not Imploded, Hamburg-based Impossible Clouds, doubles down on multi-service cloud solutions with HV Capital and 1KX, leading a 7 million seed round. Of course, also yours. Chris, I heard you like Düsseldorf. <laughs> I mean, especially given what we are going to talk about, because there's a um, Berlin-based prop tech startup called Mine, M-Y-N-E, and they are brokering shared ownership of villas. Uh, after raising 23.5 million euros, they now bought their Dusseldorf-based competitor Villa Circle. Um, they are uh, planning to expand in Europe and uh, yeah, want to establish a sharing model for villas and look, uh, vacation homes. In Bruchsal, close to Karlsruhe in southwestern Germany, there's Volocopter, which got the Sumitomo Corporation from the Fortune 500 to invest in a Series E funding and become a strategic partner for a market entry in Japan. Volocopter is still a company where a lot of like balls are in the air and it's going to be very interesting to see which of them they will be able to catch in the future. In Tübingen, not far away, also in southwestern Germany, Amazon opens a new AI research facility in Tübingen, which also led to a lot of German politicians wanting to have pictures taken there because AI apparently is the hot shit. And uh, in Heidelberg, uh, you can also meet Aleph Alpha, Germany's best competitor to Je Chat GPT. Yes, we are both suffering a little bit from hay fever, actually. 
think, right, Chris? A little bit of hay fever. I also have to meet myself. Oh, yeah. And I also have like, yeah, the eyes are turning. Yeah. Let's not talk about it. It's aging. Um, Anyway, we can only (laughs) recommend to read about Aleph Alpha because it's really interesting. And uh, I think everything that... um, that helps you understand the ongoing AI chat GPT landscape is helpful. In and this Bochum, is even an article from FAZ. So there you go. So, uh, yeah. So, like a paper similar to the likes of the Washington Post, let's say. In Bochum, which is in Western Germany and is a country, is a city that is still famous for. Um, Still having an opera house that shows Starlight Express <laughs> after <laughs> after decades, but Bochum also has the edgeless systems uh, startup that raised five million dollars for public cloud security in Jena in Eastern Germany, um, known a lot for uh, optics. Uh, there is Jena Batteries, a company building Cirque batteries, had to file for insolvency. Um, moving on to the south of Germany, to other German language countries, namely Austria, the AI startup Magic underscore Dev raised 23 million US dollars from investors, including Google. Austria's Finmatics puts AI in the hands of accountants and raises three, 6 million euros. And then our question is a name, a, a word I learned or word play, I should say, I learned just now. Uh, could you name a Sunicorn from Austria? Which company is soon going to be a unicorn? And you could try Refurb, a marketplace for used electronics. In Switzerland, we have uh, found news about the largest online comparison portal in Switzerland, Comparis, which is under scrutiny by the finance oversight body, FINMA. They now have to axe at least 10% of their workforce. Nuima Pharma raises 112 million US dollars in a Series B financing. And former Uber executive Steve Salom tap, was tapped by Switzerland's ACE and company tasked with launching a 150 million euro Swiss focused fund. ACE or ACE is a global private investment flat platform that means you cannot directly pitch them. So much so for the different cities and all the different areas in which in Germany startup activity is happening. Moving on to some more general news tech news and the companies, company news section. <laughs> Good lord. Oh, Lord. Um, new VC funds and how to pitch them. Cambridge-based Amadeus Capital Partners and Vienna-based Apex APEX Ventures orchestrate deep tech support with a joint 80 million fund for startups in GSA DACH. So far, they raised 28 million euros for their goal, but the goal is 80 million. Of course, we have the link down here in the show notes where you can pitch Apex. Specs Capital from London targets 100 million for digital for digital health deals to be invested worldwide. Note the fund is targeted, not raised yet, so you cannot pitch for money there. And Partech closes Africa 2 fund at 245 million euros. I know we do have a big listener base in Africa as well. And to find someone to pitch from Partex Africa team, just follow the link down here in the show notes. More general tech news. For the first time ever, Amazon closes down a logistics center in Germany. The building outside of Germany is too old and cannot be updated. The employees will get other offers. Nestlé invests in Munich-based drink startup Food and gets many negative reactions on Twitter. Apparently, they didn't pay attention about the Anker crowd and other deals. Um, Former Fudora CEO Ralf Wenzel is the founder of Joker, an instant grocery delivery service. After leaving many locations, including New York, I think you noticed, Chris, now they want to double down on Brazil with 50 million new funding. Um, then there is Schumpeters Schöpferische Zerstörung, meaning creative destruction still ongoing. Schumpeter was one of the most influential economists of the 20th century, uh, Austrian guys, and he co- uh, Austrian guy, and he coined the term creative destruction, which means in German, Schöpferische Zerstörung. You can learn more about him in the Wikipedia article we linked. 
and German, uh, Berlin is home to most startups in GSA. So it is not surprising that they are also the number one location for startup layoffs in GSA. We are sure the city is not proud of this first place. One football Berlin based app gets to go more than, let's go more than one third of all its employees in two downsizing rounds just weeks apart. First 60 employees had to go. Now 150 will have to leave. Banovo offered bath refurbishing for fixed price and got to eight digit revenue, but now has to file for insolvency. Hamburg based Sleeperu. Famous from Germany's Shark Tank, Die Hülle der Löwen, has to file for insolvency. Volatile Lighting has to file for insolvency as well and get it done. The Berlin-based service startup offered online merchants to sell the services matching their product. Yeah, you can guess it. Has to file for insolvency as well. Bigger news was Otto Group, one of the, I would say, Chris, former catalog empires that really digitized itself it's it's one of the big groups and the family behind it became billionaires with it they are really big in having many different online platforms and one of them was my toys the online shop including all retail outlets will be shut down the press release suggests they were never really profitable and corona did the rest 800 jobs will be lost Berlin-based cargo bike startup Avocago has to file for insolvency. And despite raising 15.5 million US dollars, food delivery service Yababa has to file for insolvency as well. Chris, that was a lot of creative destructions. You want to be a little bit more upbeat with fintech news? Yeah, fintech news. Uh, just to really very quickly run through this, uh, because it's a lot. The uh, Berlin-based tax app TaxFix, which was coined Unicorn in April 22 by board competitor Steuerbot. German finance oversight starts investigations in Uniswap since they have started marketing to German's client, German clients but don't have a license there. Then the payments fintech Data Mesh backs a $30 million Series A and Deutsche Bank joins as an investor. investor. Finway, a Munich-based expense management startup for small and medium-sized enterprises, raises 10 million US dollars in a Series A funding with lead investor uh, Capital 49. After coming for C24 and Solaris Bank just recently, the German finance oversight BaFin now goes after online broker Flatex D-Giro, D-E Giro. It's not like royalty, it's D-E as in Germany, I guess. Flatex de Giro. Uh, Neo broker scalable <laughs> capital. I have no idea. Neo broker scalable capital had a big data leak in 2020. They had to pay a penalty, but now Accord and Cologne also agreed they have to pay an affected client. 1,200 euros in damages, scalable will not appeal. And Bitpanda Technology Solutions is now available to financial institutions via Visa's fintech partner Connect program. And to end on a high note, we have news about a successful, a uh, couple of successful fundraisings. The Estonian Skeleton Technologies powers up with 51 million euro investment from Germany and Saxony, writes Invest in Estonia, which like welcome to our news, I guess. Inepte, a green hydrogen production company based in Berlin, has secured a 25 million euro bearer bond with Patrimonium Middle Market Debt Fund. The Munich-based cybersecurity startup Build38 raises 13 million euros in a Series A funding. Berlin-based Dr. Lee raises 9.4 million euros in a Series A funding. Backers included the Delta, Horizons Ventures, Speed Invest, Well Technologies, Unique, Unique A Ventures, Calm Storm, and Seedcamp. Swiss-based Era Health raises 4 million euros in pre-seed funding. Vision Health raises 3 million euros to finance extended COPD and asthma study for market preparation of Kata, an innovative digital therapeutic for improved inhalation. Germany's Trava raises 2.4 million euros to become the renewable energy supplier. And TrapLinked raises 2.3 million euros in seed funding rights, Fin SMEs. 
There that is a is... head of the curve. And Chris, we really have to hurry up. We have less than 50 seconds to say goodbye in order to stay below 50, 30 minutes. Honestly, let's do it. All we can say is there's mentions of Krispy Kreme in ahead of the curve. Bye-bye. Oh, and Chris, you owe me a donut today. No background noises. Bye, well, guys. Probably the mic was just shut off. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.